Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the General Aviation Maintenance Hangar, the Flugwerft Leukirch in the southern part of Germany. In today's video, I'll be showing you a technique I use in performing the departure and approach briefing. I use a special mnemonic called VANTRAM, which not only applies flying the 747, but any other aircraft, may it be a big airliner or a small little plane like this one. So I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply the VANTRAM briefing method. Let's keep this brief and let's get started. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are all aware that pilots brief outside of the plane in the designated briefing rooms and prior to departure within the cockpit. Today I want to focus primarily on the departure and approach briefing within the cockpit as in my opinion they are very important on a day-to-day -day basis besides the emergency briefings such as takeoff and engine out briefings. Now instead of just rambling words at your colleague, try and set up a little checklist on the topics you want to brief him and in a sensible order. Now this is where the mnemonic VANTRAM comes to play. Grab a piece of paper, write down your call sign and then the first letter W followed by an A below it and then the N, N, T, R, A and M. Then take the time to make a few notes besides every letter. Now you've completed all your pre-flight setup and checklist and you are now ready to brief your captain before requesting pushback. So the first letter is W and stands for weather. Now during your briefing in the briefing room, you made a few notes on the weather situation at your departure airport and you've just received the latest ATIS weather. Now mention the highlights such as gusts, crosswinds, potential tailwinds on takeoff, wind shear reports, visibility of obstacles, thunderstorms in the vicinity, runway contamination such as water or snow, and if so, does a low temperature affect my takeoff performance as engine anti-ice is required. If de-icing is needed due to prevailing weather, mention where the de-icing platforms are and that you have the required checklist at hand. If it's a sunny day and nothing worthy to mention, you can just tick the weather off by just saying Cav OK. Next letter A, which stands for aircraft. Now mention the type of plane you are flying that day. An Airbus A319 handles differently at rotation speed than a heavy Airbus A321. Make your captain aware of that. Many airlines fly different types of planes often on the same day. Also mention the engines. I fly two different types of planes, the 747-8 with the more modern GenX engines and the 747-400 comes with two different types, either the Rolls-Royce or the General Electric CF6 engines. Highlight the differences such as engine start procedures and if you are above 5,000 feet or a temperature above, above 35 degrees, a single engine start procedure is required. Mention tech lock entries or minimum equipment list items that could impact your departure on the climb out phase or require a PAX off departure due to performance reason. Address it. Next letter is N and stands for Notice to Airmen, short NOTAMs. I highly recommend you bring a text marker to your briefing before heading out to the plane. NOTAMs can be as long as 15 pages. Use a text marker and circle on or highlight the points that are affecting your departure or the flight plan routing. They are called a highlighter for a reason. Make your captain aware of maybe a closed taxiway, inoperative VORs, runway closures, etc. and physically show him what you have highlighted. The second letter N stands for noise abatement procedures. When can we start the APU? Are special engine startup procedures in place? Is there a special noise abatement routing to be flown? Do the thrust reduction and acceleration altitude differ from normal? Mention it. Otherwise, it'll get really expensive. <laughs> Next up is the letter T for taxi. Brief your captain on the taxi routing. 
I recommend if you work with the Lido app, use the highlight function and draw out your taxi route to the expected runway holding point. Also point out taxiway hotspots and runway crossings or during low visibility operations, point out taxi speed limits. Again, be aware of which plane you're sitting in. Your wingspan and taxi weight can be an issue and therefore special taxi charts were put into place for the 747-8 or the Airbus A380. Next up is R for routing. Mention the expected SID, the standard instrument departure. Give your captain a few seconds to find the necessary chart on his iPad or paper format. Brief from the box, meaning read the route point for point from the FMC, including altitude constraints, speed restrictions, initial climb altitude, transition level, minimum sector altitude, which radio aids you've inserted into the radio navigation page and why, and point out the pre-selected radar frequency and when to contact it. And last but not least, mention the routing for the engine out departure and what your plan of action looks like. Followed by A for automation slash the AFDS autopilot flight director system, meaning what kind of lateral and vertical guidance by the flight directors will you be using, respectively LNAF and VNAF. Now, for example, some departures state to initially maintain runway heading, climb to a given altitude, then contact radar control, who will then give you a waypoint to fly to. As this is not a defined routing which you cannot type into the FMC, in this case you couldn't use the lateral guidance by LNAF, meaning you would initially have to fly the routing in VNAF and heading select to not get false indications on your flight directors. And last but not least, the letter M for miscellaneous such as threats and differences. Mention anything that was not yet covered in the previous items. For example, if you were to cross a country border during climb out and it is requested of you to call the next radar sector before even crossing the border, have the frequency ready. Same goes for oceanic clearance requirements. At some airports, you get the clearance on ground prior to takeoff, so be ready for that. And if it's your first time at the airport, meaning you are unfamiliar with the airport layout, the geographical layout, procedures, etc., mention it. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but notify your colleague about it. As a passenger pilot, mention crew-related procedures in case of an emergency. When will you address the passengers via the PA, etc. And one of the things I like doing for good airmanship, calculating in advance and mentioning the time of fuel dump and remaining fuel to be selected. Now, as most of my flights take off above the maximum landing weight, and a lot of them are on the 747-400, I pre-calculate how much fuel we would need to dump in case of an emergency in order to lower the gross weight below the maximum landing weight. So how long would we have to dump fuel for and how much remaining fuel shall be selected on the fuel jettison panel? It's just good airmanship that never hurt anyone. Once you've gone through all the items of the van tram briefing, always give your colleagues some time to make remarks or ask questions. Now this may seem like it would take forever to brief all of this. Well, it's called a briefing for a reason. So don't mention every bump on the runway and drag it out for 10 minutes, but don't skip the things that are actually necessary to keep it short. Find the right balance and keep it under three minutes. That's just my opinion. As I said at the beginning, the Vantram mnemonic can also be used as a guide for the approach briefing. Now, the only thing I would change to maintain a sensible order and flow for the approach is to switch the letter T and R. So routing first before mentioning the taxi highlights, that's all. Please take this topic seriously, especially if you are at flight school, as a good briefing can make a huge difference in the outcome of your flight. A briefing is preparing you mentally on a situation or action that's about to happen. And as I like saying, the five Ps, proper preparation prevents poor performance. <laughs> 
Now, I'm not saying that the Vantram mnemonic is for everyone, but please try it out on your next flight or if you are practicing on a flight simulator and you'll see you'll get better at it over time. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. See you next week. Your Captain Joe.